tubs or tanks? Which is better for your pet reptile? Is it acceptable to keep a pet reptile inside of a tub system, inside of a Rubbermaid or Sterilite container? Well, today we're going to go over the pros and cons of each type of setup. I'm Adam. This is Wiggins Wicked Reptiles. This is Littlefoot. Stick around. Yes, tub systems and tank systems are completely fine for your animal. Now, at the beginning of the video, I'll let you know, when I say tank, I mean anything that isn't a tub. So it could be an aquarium, it could be a custom-made melamine enclosure, it could be a PVC. Another thing too is, it depends on the species that you're keeping. So there's no tubs are better or tanks are better or whatever. You can't really put a, a check mark against tubs or tanks because it depends on what you're keeping in there. There are certain animals that you can't keep in tub systems like you would say a leopard gecko because leopard geckos don't need UVB light. And here's something that is gonna be uh, kind of a through line here. If you need UVB light for one of your species of animals, like a bearded dragon, for example, you can't have a bearded dragon in a tank system like a rack, right? You can't have it in a rack because how are you gonna facilitate UVB? Well, the answer is you can't. You, you can't facilitate UVB in a rack system. There are ways in tubs where you could make the tub high enough that a bearded dragon couldn't get out, for example, or whatever animal needs UVB, but you're gonna need the light to be propped up. It's not gonna be able to go inside of a racking system unless you have something like a metal rack where you put it on top, but I wouldn't even suggest that. So if you need a UVB light for your setup, you're better off with something like an aquarium, right? Or a custom made enclosure where you can screw the UVB to the top like you'll see here. Normally when I do a head-to-head -head competition with an animal, I give points and go through categories, but there is no clear winner or I don't even have an opinion of which one is better between tubs or tanks because it completely depends on so many factors. So let's just go through a few points and then you can figure out what's better for you and your setup and your animal most importantly. First thing is size. Um, I'm gonna put manageability with this as well because with tanks or tubs, it depends how big of an enclosure you need. If you need a giant enclosure, something like a reticulated python or a Burmese python, you're gonna have a hard time finding a tub system that works for this. There is custom ones that are made, Boafile makes some, uh, but it's not gonna be as easy as just going to a store, buying a bunch of melamine, putting a rack together, and then going to Walmart and getting yourself some Sterilite tubs. You're not gonna find one big enough, most likely, unless, of course, you have a very small individual and you can find yourself a Christmas tree box but those are pretty rare to find and it's gonna outgrow it anyway. So you're better off with something custom made out of melamine or a PVC enclosure. Aquariums probably won't be the best uh, for these types of animals, but you're gonna have a lot more options with tanks than you would with tubs in terms of larger options. But if you're thinking about something like a leopard gecko, either one would work, right? You're always gonna have a little bit more height with an aquarium or some sort of tank likely, right? You can get, you know, one foot PVCs. I've got a couple of those. But tubs, generally, if you're going to get them in for a racking system, are going to be right around 7 inches tall. That's what I've got in my racking systems. They're all 7 inches tall. Um, and I do keep leopard geckos in 28 quart containers, which is perfect space for them. But if you want something that needs a little bit more height, like an iguana, well, first of all, iguanas need a ton of space, but they need to be able to climb. Uh, so a 7 inch tub isn't going to work for them. Same thing with um, a boa constrictor. I mean, there are certain boas, individuals like mine, who does have 24 inches to play with in a custom made enclosure made of melamine. She doesn't ever climb, even though she's got options to, but that is a, a species where they're not arboreal, but you'd want to give them more room than 7 inches to play with. So for height, if you need height, tub systems or rack systems are not always the greatest way to go. Uh, the best thing to do is make custom enclosures or if it's a small floor space you need, I'm sure there's lots of glass or PVC options for you. But with size two, you might be thinking, well, what about manageability, right? With tubs, I don't know how much a 28 quart tub like this weighs, but I'll bet you it's gonna be, I don't know, a pound or less, like, likely less than a pound. So you can manipulate it, you can turn it upside down with one hand and clean it however you want to clean it. With a tank, you can't. Even a 10 gallon is going to give you issues and it's also breakable where with a tub, you're going to have, you know, maybe some issues with cracking if you really drill a lot of holes in it or you're rough with it, but it's not going to shatter like a glass tank might if you drop it or you're too rough with it, right? 
So that's one thing to consider and it's going to be a lot lighter, which means that cleaning the tanks is going to be a lot more difficult than cleaning tubs. Cleaning tubs, I literally did 10 tubs today. I don't know how long it took me 20 minutes maybe it was super simple super quick i can manipulate them all i want and they're just it's just so much easier and because they're kind of rounded at the bottom and they're not, they don't have deep like steep corners like very i don't know like 90 degree angles in them the water doesn't recess there they're easy to clean out it's just so much easier if i had 10 tanks to clean out it's going to be a pain like just to give you an example today my task was i had 10 tubs that I had to clean and I've got one exoterra front opening glass enclosure I need to clean. I'm putting that one off and doing everything before that because I just don't want to do it. It's such a pain in comparison to cleaning tubs. All right, so there you go. That's your size comparison between the two. Let's move on to the essentials for the animal and I'm talking about heat, humidity, and lighting. Um, now I always go over this with specific animals. Now this is really important of course. If you need UVB lighting like we mentioned, a tub system isn't going to be super easy to facilitate. You can always put a lamp, like a heat lamp if you wanted, over top, but if you have a lid you're going to have to cut out a piece and even then it might melt around it. I personally think it might be a fire hazard. I'm sure there's a way you can do it right, I just don't know how, so I've never done anything like that. And same with UVB, you're going to have to prop it up above, it's just kind of a nightmare. If you don't need a lid on the, the tank, or the tub rather, if you don't need a lid on your tub, well, then you can like rig it up, right? A lot of people keep tortoises like this. But in general, if you need lighting, especially basking lighting, suppose you have a bearded dragon or you're a mastix or a savanna monitor where you really do want a bulb to do uh, the heating rather than belly heat, you're going to want to make sure that you have a light, right? A light source. And you can't really do that with a tub. So melamine is really great for this because you can rig it up inside actually. And then with aquariums, you can put it over top of the screen as well. But that's where the humidity thing comes in because if you've got screen then that means that humidity is going to escape so with bearded dragons that's great right or leopard geckos or hognose snakes or something that doesn't need a lot of humidity with the humidity escaping isn't that big of a deal but if you've got something where you need a lot of humidity like uh not really a lot of humidity but even a moderate amount like a uh, ball python you wouldn't want it to be escaping. And my sister, for example, she's only got three reptiles, so she keeps them all in glass tanks. And she's always got issues with humidity, especially when the furnace is on. So she's gotta you know, put tape or towels or something over top to keep the humidity in when it's drier inside the house, where I don't have that issue with PVCs. For example, like you can see here with Pikachu, Pikachu is a full grown albino uh, ball python, and he's got a medium that does contain a lot of humidity and hold humidity very well but I only have to spray once every two days if I really want to I spray once a day to keep it right around 65 70 in there but if I leave for two or three days and I come back the lowest I've seen it get is 64 percent which may be a little bit too low but it's not going to be harmful for just a day or two to have them at that low of, of the humidity level and of course this means that heat will be held in a little bit better too because it's not escaping all like heat rises obviously so if you've got a melamine enclosure that doesn't have venting in the top or a pvc that doesn't have venting in the top then you're not gonna have to worry about that heat just rising out and escaping with tubs that's another thing right you can choose how much ventilation you want you're gonna have a very tiny space in between the melamine or whatever your rack is made of uh, for your tub to slide through so there will be airflow that way and it will escape that way but if you need a lower humidity level then you just drill more holes in right all my hognose snakes have two rows of holes or they have really big holes or they have a lot around um, I suggest doing two rows because it does get brittle if they're too close together where when I had ball pythons in tubs I keep it a little bit more humid in there so there's less holes in there and then of course you just miss down the way that you want to but you don't want to be going in there and having to miss down every day because you've got too many holes really there's a lot of different options but you know with heat and humidity that's something you want to consider with tubs or tanks and i think the last important thing to note is handleability feeding and accessibility right because you're going to need to go and feed these things and you're going to want to handle your animals more than likely so you want to be able to get to them and you don't have to be a pain in your butt to do that with feeding if you've got a super aggressive feeder that is big and may miss then a tub system is a little bit sketchy right and this is what I mean they're not uh, opaque well I guess they're kind of like translucent right so they're not opaque and they're not transparent they're like translucent so 
so you can see through them a bit, but sometimes you can't see in there the best, especially if they've got substrate kind of piled along it, right? So it's gonna be kind of sketchy to have a rat and then have your hand, so you, it's a little bit of a consideration, you don't know where the animal is. When I used to keep my boa constrictor when she was smaller inside of a tub system, I'd open that thing and she'd come flying out with her mouth open and I almost got tagged a few times and you don't want to be on the business end of a boa constrictor. With something like a leopard gecko, you don't really have to worry about that because even if she wanted to bite me, I mean, it's kind of funny, right? So in my opinion, if you want to see your animal, if you want to actually look at them, then a glass enclosure or a PVC or something where you can actually look through and has a viewing area is better, of course. But if you have a bunch of animals and you want to keep them in a smaller space, like a rack, right? I've got 10 animals inside this rack system, and this rack system literally takes up 24 inches by 18 inches, and then whatever height it is. So it takes up very little floor space, where if you had a tank that had, or tanks that held 10 animals, that's sometimes a whole room. And one more thing, with tubs, they're going to feel really secure. A lot of animals, especially snakes, feel very secure when they're hidden. And because not tons and tons of light is getting in, but enough to create a day and night cycle with tubs more than likely, they're going to feel more secure. And I notice this a lot with ball pythons. They like to hide during the day, and they're going to feel really secure, and they're not going to feel as stressed out in my experience. Same thing with leopard geckos. They like to be in tight spaces as well. But in general, a lot of animals will feel nice and secure inside of a smaller space that doesn't have tons and tons of light coming in and light coming in from all the way around where because I've got solid sides and solid backs on my rack systems there's really only light coming from one direction so they can feel very secure knowing where everything is coming from. With that said if you're going in to handle your animals all the time a lot of animals especially animals that have a uh, very well-developed third eye on their the top of their head. That's a different video if you want more information about what that means and how that works, such as um, bearded dragons or jeweled lacertas. These guys will see a shadow, literally, from the top of their head because they have that third eye uh, and they're going to feel threatened if you come in from the top. So that's why I like melamine enclosures for these guys. Well, first of all, for lacertas and uh, Bearded Dragons, you're going to need UVB light, so that's one thing to consider. And usually these have front opening enclosures, right? They're front opening doors. PVCs, they flip down or they slide. And my melamines, they slide as well. So if you want to go in to grab your animal, a lot of the times they feel more secure, you coming in from the side, than in over the top. And just real quick, as we round it out, price and availability. Um, uh, 10 gallon tanks or smaller 20 gallon tanks, 40 gallon breeders, can come pretty cheap but you're gonna pay about a dollar a gallon if not more for these where with tubs I mean in Canada here it's gonna be a little bit more expensive but a 28 quart tub is gonna cost I think they're 10 bucks and then it's 14 bucks or 15 bucks for one of the 41 quarts that you'll see here so they're really cheap they're kind of not disposable but if they break or crack no big deal if you break or crack an exoterra enclosure some of them are like 300 bucks brand new. So, and they're both pretty available. I mean, you can go to any Walmart and buy tubs. So I think it's definitely cheaper and easier to replace tubs rather than tanks or racks or PVCs and building a melamine enclosure. That's a test of patience. I'll tell you that from experience. So that's it. I just wanted to give you some information, tubs or tanks, I get asked all the time. So if you have any additional questions, put it in the comment section below. You guys know I answer a lot of questions in the comment section. And if there's a video you want to see that I haven't done yet, put it in the comment section below. I love taking these topics from the comment section. That's where I got the idea for this one. So until next time, because I do videos twice a week, that means that I'll see you on Thursday.